All my life I've been a performer, a musician, beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> but you can trust me. I've got this under control. <laughs> Step one, find out who or what is trying to take control of my mind. Step two, make it sorry it ever tried. What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a lore video about none other than Losa, an origin character from Divinity Original Sin 2. So with the release of the Godwoken graphic novel, which fills us in on the origin characters of Divinity Original Sin 2 and what brought them to Fort Joy where the game starts, I felt now was the appropriate time to broach the subject of doing lore videos on each of these origin characters. I've already done iFan, that brings us to Losa being next next in line. So let's dive right into it. Who is Losa? Losa was a famous musician who has always been a particularly susceptible home for wayward spirits, meaning she is very easily possessed for some reason. The specific reason never really being explained as to why, but from Losa herself in the graphic novel as well as the game, we can learn that some of these spirits are not always friendly. Some of them are out to do harm and damage, but for the most part, she's able to keep it under control. Now let's talk about the things we specifically learn from the graphic novel. Unfortunately, it's not as much as I would like. We don't really know where she is from or what she did as a child or anything. What we know is that she became a famous musician in spite of her tendency to, you know, be possessed. And she eventually found a traveling troop that she could call her family as far as she was concerned. However, after an incident at a village in which a possession led her to ultimately wind up burning down the stage and scaring all of the audience, of course, she was actually voted out of the troop, which obviously hurt her quite a bit. Now, at the same time, the troop was originally planning to head to Arcs to do a show there and Losa is still expected to perform. So despite splitting ways with the troop, she winds up heading to Arcs as well. But on her way there, a friend who calls himself Nick, and I use the friend term very lightly, shows up. He seems to be a puppeteer who is, you know, inherently kind of a weird guy, but moreover, he's wearing a mask, and he tells Losa that he left the troop as well, simply because after them ousting her, he just didn't feel right about being with the troop beyond that point. Nick and Losa begin to make their way towards Arcs. However, Nick here seems to be trying to help Losa channel her power, so to speak, and try to get the spirits under control. And he explains that Losa can do this by any time she feels overwhelmed by the spirits to just channel those feelings into her music music. And over the course of several days, or however long it took them to travel to the city of Arcs, Losa seems to begin to master this, and you know, like channeling those feelings of overwhelmed and everything else when she's being possessed through her music seems to be able to help her control the spirits that are trying to possess her all the time. Now, once they get to Arcs, she sees her old troop there. They were doing their part of the show or whatever, and when Losa talks to a couple of them, she mentions that she was traveling with Nick. And while the troop clearly has no idea who that is, Losa doesn't see it before it's her time to go up on stage. And at this point, we learn that what Nick has actually been doing the entire time is slowly teaching Losa her special source ability, which in game is known as Maddening Song, where basically Losa sings a song and everyone who doesn't have magic armor in the game then is afflicted with the mad status effect, which makes them go crazy and attack everything in sight. Now, what this looks like in the graphic novel is as she begins her show and does this, she's effectively using a source power which turns the entire crowd against each other and she basically incites a mob with her music. Now, she winds up breaking her loot once she realizes what is going on. And then when the Magisters come for her for using source, she actually doesn't put up a fight and goes with them willingly because Losa realizes that she is a danger to other people and she wants to do the right thing. So almost painfully so, in the case of Losa, she goes to Fort Joy simply because she genuinely believes that her being locked up might be what's best for everyone, at least at first. 
Now, this is where the same voice that was, you know, Nick, is taunting her the entire time as we see her being carted off to Fort Joy. So it would appear that the puppeteer actually turns out to be the demon that is, in fact, possessing Losa throughout the game. Now, real quick, before we move on to the actual game of Divinity Original Sin 2 and what we learn there, I want to mention that it does say that for Losa, her music comes from these spirits. That is to say, it kind of implies that when they possess her, she kind of like, you know, feels their emotions and things, and then she uses that to write her music. So she's afraid if she can actually control this ability and not be possessed or, you know, do all these things all the time, then would she even be the same person she's always been? That's pretty much what we learn from the Godwoken graphic novel. And then, of course, that brings us to what we know of Losa in the game. Losa, like all of our other origin characters, or any character, of course, starts the game in Act 1, Fort Joy, being a sorcerer imprisoned in Fort Joy. Now, in this area, if Losa comes into contact with Sahela at all, it will always start a fight. Basically, whatever is possessing Losa demands that she fights Sahela. And if you do enough damage to Losa to get her to calm down on your team, or if you kill Sahela if you sided with Losa on this, then the fight will end. Now that has a ton of consequences. Sahela is involved in a bunch of stuff in other quests and things. But more specifically, this instance makes it very clear that whatever is possessing Losa is very violent, and it will make her do things she does not want to do. Now the other thing we can find in Fort Joy in regards to Losa is a demon hunter's apprentice named Zillick, which is in the dungeons of Fort Joy, the actual prison area. Now Zillick, if he speaks to Losa, or if you're with Losa and they go speak to him, Zillick explains that she's clearly possessed and they should seek his old master, Jehan. Now Zillick apparently is a former demon hunter and has no desire to continue the practice, which is why he's worried about if Jehan will ever actually find him. Now, so at this point, Losa needs to, of course, escape Fort Joy, and in doing so, you'll come into contact with Malady, one of the main characters. Malady is a half-demon, at the very least, who helps our characters throughout the game, as I'm sure many of you know. But it's important to know that, of the origin characters, Losa is her favorite, by far. Losa is really the only origin character Malady will actually be, like, friendly to. Almost motherly, at times. So just keep in mind that Malady and Losa are very sympathetic with each other, so you will get some extra dialogue with Malady and Losa. However, none of it's super important and you do the quest like regardless, but just keep in mind, Losa and Malady got along very, very well. When we find ourselves in Driftwood, or Reaper's Coast, as part of Act 2 of Divinity, this is where we can look into tracking down Jehan, and it is where... Losa's quest actually gets much more interesting and really starts to take off. So, as part of the main story, our characters will have found out they were Godwoken. However, while that is true for Losa, what she will have actually come into contact with is the demon that is possessing her. So while the other Godwoken come into contact with their gods, who are like, you know, you're a chosen champion, Losa comes into contact with the demon that is possessing her, which sounds interesting at first, but ultimately it's just a reskin of the god situation with the other origin characters. He'll tell you exactly the same thing as all the other ones, and basically just kind of set you on that same path, really, because of reasons we'll learn in a bit. However, as I mentioned, Losa is one of these Godwoken nonetheless, and the Seekers, who we will met on the island of Fort Joy want to help you ascend to divinity, or any of the Godwoken, really. And when you get to Driftwood, you find out that you need to find more Source Masters to expand your understanding of Source and be able to channel more of it. One of these Masters you can find turns out to be Jehan the Demon Hunter. Now, Jehan recognizes Losa's ailment immediately, because of course he's a Demon Hunter. So, Jehan will have a very specific task for us to do, which will be to travel to the island just north of there, known as Blood Moon Island, which is a blighted, possessed, terribly demon-infested place. But more specifically, he wants you to go there and kill the head demon named the Advocate. And if you do this, he'll do what he can to help Losa. Now, it's worth noting, especially at this moment, that Divinity Original Sin 2 is a game of choices. And if you're playing as Losa, you can kind of do whatever you want. So I'm just trying to broadly speak about the story of what Losa is most likely to do, I would say. But keep in mind, due to the very nature of player choice, might not necessarily be what you have to do, or by any means what you did. So when you get to the Advocate, you don't necessarily have to kill the guy. But if you want Jehan to help you, you definitely do. 
So assuming you kill the advocate and head back to Jehan, he will attempt to perform an exorcism on Losa. And in doing so, he will come into direct contact with the demon, of course, that is possessing Losa. Now, ultimately, he fails at this exorcism. He's unable to purge the demon. Because as Jehan puts it, he's become so intertwined with who Losa is that to rip it out would just kill Losa outright. But seeing as Losa is still in control of her faculties for the time being, obviously nobody wants to do that. Unless, of course, you do, in which case, you know, you can kind of like remove Losa from your party, etc., etc. Jehan will actually have one more task for you, which is to go back to Blood Moon Island and find the name of the demon that has been possessing Losa the entire time. Which you can do. It involves a quest on Blood Moon Island where you gotta do some research, find some hidden vaults, and eventually you'll find the name of the tree on the island. The tree on the island, the ancestor tree, is Elianessa. Elianessa, if you speak to her using your spirit vision, will actually tell you the story of how she was possessed by a demon, brought to this island where they used to perform exorcisms and help these people, but unfortunately she was beyond helping. And when a doctor, one Dr. Deva, attempted to actually help her out, through an exorcism, it failed miserably, thus causing what happened to this island. Now, this is especially important because when we bring this information back to Jehan, in which we will have learned the demon's name and drama leak, Jehan will explain things to us. Basically, this demon is not just any old demon, it's an arch demon. It is incredibly old, it's incredibly powerful. And moreover, Jehan has met this one. It actually even fooled Jehan into thinking it was just a regular person because this demon went on to possess the doctor that tried to help Elianessa, Dr. Deva. Jehan will explain that he knows for a fact this doctor resides in the city of Arx. Now at this point, you can make a decision whether or not to take Jehan along with you to help you in the fight against Dr. Deva if it comes to that. But at this point, we can pretty much move on with the story. Eventually, you're going to head off to a place called the Nameless Isle, where your characters will, of course, try to ascend to divinity, which will ultimately fail, which will then bring you to chase down the reason that failed to the city of Arx. Now, I skip over Act 3 for Losa because nothing happens there. In Act 3, the only thing Losa is focused on is fighting the demon inside of herself. She doesn't really have any unique dialogue, nothing really going on. And then, of course, we arrive in Arx. Obviously, at this point, we can know that Dr. Deva is here, who is actually, of course, Andromalik. And if we go to his house ahead of time, we simply won't be able to get in, under normal means, anyway. Once you advance the main story a little bit, eventually you'll be given an invitation by a demon, it would seem, to go visit Dr. Deva. You can do all of this without Losa, in, which is usually the case with most of the origin stories. If you go to Dr. Deva's house when you have Losa, you will be met by Malady. Malady will have actually found a way to potentially weaken the Archdemon Andromalik ahead of your confrontation. And this is where you get a really cool bit of story where Malady will take you to Andromalik's personal plane of existence, where he holds all the souls that he's damned, thus generating his power. And this takes the form of candles. Losa can choose to snuff them out, thus taking power away from Andromalik. And it turns out towards the end that there's tens of thousands, maybe even millions of these candles. But in snuffing these candles out, you kill the actual person that is associated with this. Because, you know, most of them are actually still alive. They've just pledged their soul to Andromalik. So this is an integral part of Losa's story. She will actually choose to do this on her own, even if you're not playing as her. But if you are playing as her, you can, of course, choose to not do this though it certainly defaults to actually doing it. Now, once this is done, what it actually does is it weakens Andromalee quite a bit. It makes that fight substantially easier should you actually choose to fight the guy. But once you confront Dr. Deva, this is where things get interesting. So if you have not weakened him when you go to confront him, he will ultimately just possess Losa outright, which unlike the normal possession of the game mechanics, cannot be fixed in any way which kind of breaks their own rules, but it kind of adds to the story, so, you know, it's fine. But obviously, if you've weakened him, you can push back, and, you know, it'll it'll come to a fight, obviously. In which case, you'll have to slay Andromalik. Now, that is the normal option. Losa will, of course, after his death, be freed of his grip, will finally be herself again, and you get a really wonderful ending to her story in which she actually sings a song because she's a famous musician. Honestly, love it. It's an amazing quest. However... I would be remiss if I didn't actually cover everything in this lore video. Here's the thing. You don't have to kill Andromalik. You can actually make a deal with this guy in which if Losa ascends to divinity, she will share divinity with the demon. 
That is an actual ending of the game. You don't even have to have Losa to make that happen, actually. Any of the characters can do it. But because it's tied in with Losa's main quest, obviously I wanted to mention it as an option. Though canonically, we know that is not what happens. Or at least probably. Because, thanks to the marketing for Fallen Heroes, which will probably be the next game after Divinity Original Sin 2, that is set two years after Original Sin 2, we can make some educated guesses about what happens to our origin characters. That Fallen Heroes takes place in a purged world, which means that the purged world source ending is more than likely the canonical ending to the game. And B, Losa is very much so alive. So it's safe to say that throughout the game, Losa was more than likely freed of her demonic corruption, and of course, what the actual ending to the game was. Now, one little small tidbit, if Jehan accompanied you to Arx, you can find him in the basement of Dr. Deva's house because he will have tried to attack Dr. Deva upon your arrival in Arx, but will have unfortunately have been captured and you can go set him free for a little bit of extra wrap up on that loose end as well. So there you go, guys. That is everything I could cobble together about Losa, a fan favorite origin character for obvious reasons. She's definitely one of the best done characters in the game. But again, there's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, stick around. Channel's always growing. I love to have you guys. But again, thank you so much. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.